I would be considered a high achiever. Learning was a passion and still is. A real self-starter. I travelled Australia and loved the outdoors. I was very physically active, competing at high levels in netball and middle distance running. Even though I cannot do all those normal activities you associate with living, such as walking and talking, I have a big reason for getting out of bed in the morning. I have a purpose that is about achieving, doing the impossible and challenging myself to go that little bit further every day. Who helps me? Peter, first and foremost. We met at a ball for race week in Darwin. It was love at first sight, but little did we know what lay ahead. Kylie, can you get me another pillow, please? Sorry. I think it was probably love at first sight. There, we sort of glanced across the room at each other and and uh, within about five minutes, I think we were talking, conversing and having a drink. <laughs> one, two, one, A, B, C, one. We communicate via a, a universal communication system where we use the vowel system and letters in the alphabet for Marie to acknowledge letters that become words that then become sentences. One, two, E, could use, use, U-S-E. One, two, three, E, F, could you see? <laughs> Could you see me? <laughs> well, you, you insinuating I might have been a bit inebriated. <laughs> I suffered the stroke very soon after moving to Wyala to be with Pete. He was my inspiration for survival. Well, Marie had been uh, complaining a couple of days beforehand of some serious headaches and uh, and wouldn't go to the doctor <laughs> after uh, numerous requests from myself. And um, yes, yeah, she just uh, got up one morning, went and had a shower, and came back into the bedroom to get dressed and collapsed. And had this massive stroke. So yeah, it was pretty devastating. I thought she'd dropped dead in front of me. I thought she'd died. It was all so weird. Take a moment to put yourself in my position. In the space of only hours, you've gone from finishing breakfast and having a shower at home to laying flat on your back in a hospital bed. You cannot move anything. You cannot talk, and at this early stage, you cannot see. There are tubes up your nose, and someone has cut a hole in your throat and inserted another tube so you can breathe. You are terrified because you don't know what's happening to you. You know you are crying, but there is no sound. Everyone around you is so distressed. It was just total shock and devastation. You know, you just think that that happens to old people, not to your sister, not to your vibrant, active sister or, or daughter. I think Dad found it extremely hard. He would just walk and walk for miles. You know, he just found it hard that he couldn't fix it, as fathers do. You know, and I think as Mum said, that when you, you're told that you'll never hear your daughter's voice again, that she'll never speak and never move, that it's just, you know, heart-wrenching. And that's what was so weird. All this was going on outside, but on the inside, I was fully conscious to all that was happening. I could hear every word. I could recognise voices of family. I could hear the doctors talking a priest giving the last rites. Then it starts to dawn on me. Oh my God, I am locked inside my own body. And at this moment, I have no way of telling anyone that I'm here. Many hours later, amongst the noise, confusion and chaos of that first day, there was a defining moment not everything was paralysed. I could blink. You just can't get any closer to the edge than a doctor saying to you, Marie, do you want to live? Blink once for yes and twice for no. 
I put every ounce of my being into that blink. It was the biggest decision of my life. You could see in her eyes that it was the same Marie, but certainly facially, initially, it was, it was hard to look at Marie and say, yeah, this is the Marie I met. Yeah. Yeah. But then you look in her eyes and you see it. What do I love about Peter? He has stood by me and stands for me, no matter how tough things get. We understand each other completely. When there are things that need to be said and done that I cannot physically do, he has been my voice and legs for 17 years. One, two, he oh. punishing me. You couldn't imagine life without me punishing you daily. Is that right? Yeah. And how do I feel about that? Good. <laughs> Because I have a strong mind, brain, I don't feel trapped as such. There are things I obviously can't do, but I've never let myself get into a mindset of being trapped. It has become less important to have a verbal voice. My look and body language speaks volumes. I instruct staff, manage my household, and communicate clearly. I eat through my mouth and drink from a cup. I breathe normally all of which is a reflection of how healthily I keep my body. I also function just like any other woman in every way. I cry, I laugh, I get angry, sad, and I enjoy an active social life. I admire everything about Marie. I, I kind of envy some of the stuff. Like, I envy her mind and her strong-willedness and her ability to get up every day with a smile on her face and just get on with it. Marie has taught me to be patient. <laughs> Is that convincing enough? Yeah, I know, you're smart ass. <laughs> I am so lucky to have had two lives, an abled life and a disabled life. How amazing is that? Yeah, I mean, certainly uh, we're soulmates. You know, just gotta, gotta do it, you gotta be there to give Marie all the love and support that she needs. That's a pretty big journey she's on. I have come to understand that your body is just the vehicle that carries your brain around. And as long as that is functioning, then you'll never be trapped. Yeah.